Julius White, lead pastor of Community Christian Center. And I just wanted to take a moment to personally thank you for connecting with us via our live stream. I believe that you're in the right place at the right time to receive a radical word that's going to change your life. And while we are so glad that you've connected with us via our live stream, we really look forward to meeting you and greeting you right here on our Henranco campus. Hey, we're located at 2213 National Street, Henranco, Virginia, 23231. You can always check us out on the web at www.your3c.com. Now get your pad, get your pencil, get your paper, and let's get ready to go higher in the praise. Peace. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good, morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man, we are so excited again that you all decided to stop by. Y'all hit that button, and y'all decided to stop by 3C again on this Sunday morning yes, to yes. worship with us. Thank you. Um, because there could have been many other churches mm. that you could have hit that button and strolled or, and went to another other churches, but you decided to hang out with Pastor K. Pastor J. Hey, and we are excited. We are excited because this whole month, we have been celebrating Save, Save Women's Rock. Rock. Oh, save women, save, save girls. women. What is all the save all the women? Say girls. Save say girls. Save girls rock. Okay, save girls rock. Or save women. Save rock. women rock. All of it means the same. Y'all rock. We Give rock. it up. Give it up. We, we applaud rock. you all month long. Yeah. So yes. the yes. month of May at Three C is all about celebrating women. Women. And women. And Pastor K gets to lead all of our services. She gets to uh, connect yes. on what we're gonna do and how it's gonna be done. So give it up. For Pastor K, because we've had an outstanding month. Thank you so much for allowing me to teach this month. No, thank you, ladies. Hat man, he has been doing a wonderful job. If I have not told you, which I think I have, but I want to tell you again. Tell me thank again. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank yeah, you so yeah, much yeah, yeah, yeah. for just giving us the word. It's been awesome, awesome, awesome. And I know, hey, look, I know y'all been telling me, and I've been getting your inboxes. Like, I've been looking at him like I'm a schoolgirl, looking in his <laughs> eyes while he's speaking. Yes, I do. I love hearing this man. I still got it. I, st I love hearing this man <laughs> teach and preach the word of God. I love it. I love it. I so love listen, it. listen, listen. Why, why are we so excited about this week, Pastor? Man. Okay. okay, let me calm down. Okay. And let me take my time. Usa. Okay. So I am excited because my first lady <laughs> is going to bring the word on this morning. Wow. My first lady, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman. Woo, -woo! Woo, woo! I am so excited. I am so excited that she accepted the invitation yes. uh, to come and bring a word to the women um, man, it's, I, it's just where I, I can't even explain. I'm getting tongue tied just trying to explain to y'all how excited I am about mm. the word that she's going to impart upon us um, yeah, today. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really excited. So good. I hope that you uh, uh, sit back wherever you are. If you're driving, just take your time. But um, I'm hoping that you will just, man, just tune in to this word that Dr. Didi Freeman is going to bring. And again, Dr. Didi, I am so excited and I'm so grateful that you decided to say yes on today. Yeah. So listen, it's got a great word plan for you guys. Again, Dr. Didi Freeman, uh, all the way from Brandywine, Maryland. She's going to bring this powerful so word. Uh, listen, you, we're... Service is going to last about an hour, hour and 15, maybe about an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, we got some powerful praise and worship prepared for you guys. Um, you're going to get opportunities to connect with us, uh, to do ministry. You're going to get opportunities to connect with us in giving. Uh, you're going to get an opportunity really, really, really to get your praise on this morning. So, Oh, yeah, uh, special guest. Yes, yes. So listen, listen, hurry up. Hurry up. You hear me? Hurry up. Get your coffee, get your whatever, uh, get your pads, uh, get your Bibles, and let's get ready to have some awesome time of fellowship through praise and worship. Dr. Dee Dee Freeman has got a word, but before she comes, man, we have a special yes. guest all the way from Philadelphia, PA, 
none of her this morning leading us in praise and worship is our dear, dear friend, Dave Live Watkins. Give it up. Give him some praise. Hey, I'm telling you, after you hear the ministry, this ministry gift, man, you're going to want to get connected. You can reach out to us. We can tell you how to contact him. Yes, he's available to do certain things, but it just we're so grateful that he's here. We're grateful that Dr. Diddy's here. So again, lean in, get ready, uh, and, and let's go higher in the praise. So yes. uh, let's get ready. Let's everybody ready, 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 ready. Hey, and that's why <laughs> life is better when we do it together. Love you guys. Peace. should know this song especially in this time we have a lot of time to sit around some of you are using it wisely some of you are not but we all should be taking this time to get closer God because as we are witnessing right now none of us are in control and tomorrow is definitely not promised nobody has to say that in a scripture because you're living through it right now God has seen fit during this time to bring his Bible to life. He is showing you to your face that you are no longer in control. He's showing you to your face that everything that you thought was important was merely a distraction. So he took it all away. Think about it. Most of us, he took our jobs away. He took your friend time away. You can't go visit your friends. You can't go to your favorite watering holes. You can't go shopping. You can't go out to a restaurant. You can't go to your local CVS without wondering am I going to catch something so you stay at home how powerful that is when you look around and you see what God has done you also look around and you see the things that he's kept or giving you more of. For most people, it's been a lot more family time. The main people we take for granted because we're so busy being busy. It's giving you a lot of time to read. A lot of time to watch TV, a lot of time to just sit. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, that's been hard to do. So he's showing you to your face that it's hard to turn your eyes to him because we're so used to being distracted. So used to thinking things are important that are really not. So used to chasing money chasing things and now he's giving you this time to sit and a lot of us are depressed frustrated people are picketing and protesting but hopefully 
you've taken this time to get closer to God, closer to your loved ones. And truly noticing what's really important. The most telling thing for me is I'm trying my best to be a Christian. Is they took away your church building. People are up in arms. And I found a lot of my Christian brothers and sisters changing the narrative, like changing the narrative and saying it was an attack on God, an attack on Christianity. They're telling us we can't go to church. It's an attack on, on who we are as people. And I had a long conversation with a very good friend of mine. I disagreed. This wasn't an attack on God, on Christianity. It was an attack on your comfortability. Because they didn't come on TV and say, you can't profess the name of Jesus. They didn't come on, t on TV and say, if I catch you reading the Bible, we're going to hang you or shoot you or whatever. They came on TV and said, so that we can make sure that everyone's safe, let's slow down the spread and stop congregating together. We changed the narrative. And so I was talking to my friend and I said, as a Christian, I saw this as a light on how fragile we are. Because if God truly took away his physical building of church, Unfortunately, we as Christians had no idea what to do. So it took me back to Old Testament times. New Testament times when they were running away and they couldn't meet in, in physical buildings like the luxuries that we have, they couldn't do. Because they were really under attack. I said, obviously, God knew who we really are. That's why he birthed us in this time. And I was talking to him, and he didn't agree. He said, this was an attack. This is, this is spiritual warfare. And I said, no. It's not. If anything, this is God getting rid of all of your distractions and everything you're comfortable with because it's easy to go to church sit in the pew raise your hands for two what two hours sometimes it's 45 minutes look at your phone for the word and get distracted by Facebook while you're in service it's easy to do that do your couple of shouts But it's hard to actually live your life that way. And we're finding that out now. And that's what I told him. I said, you're finding out your weakness. And your weakness may just be you're so used to your pastor doing all the work. And you're so used to the choir doing all the work and the musicians doing all the work that you forgot The Bible says to show yourself approved. Needless to say, we didn't get off the phone too great. So I just pray for you all and I say, I hope you're taking this time and getting closer because now you have the time. Yeah, you may not have the money. You may be frustrated. But if God really, truly took everything away, for real, I pray that you're ready. So I encourage you. If you're not reading, read. If you're not praying, pray. That's all we got. And our pastors are getting very well at doing their live streams, and that's great.
is alive. He won the victory. He reigns so on high. He won the victory. He reigns so on high. He won the victory. He reigns so on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. Take it right where you are. You have won the victory. If it gets too hard, just sing this song.
I'm excited to be here with you guys. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Karen, for allowing me to be a part. Um, you guys are truly a blessing to us, and I love you so much. I've been doing so many of these um, Zoom meetings. It seems like this has become our way of life for the moment. Don't get too used to this because we all got to get back into the house of the Lord so we can worship together. I'm looking forward to that day. I mean, things like uh, we know it, I don't know if it will ever, you know, come back to that, but hey, whatever it is, we must prepare now. And that's really what I want to talk to you a little bit about. Um, now, uh, Karen gave me, or Pastor Karen, no, no disrespect, gave me the title um, of leveling up. And, you know, typically, people don't always look stuff up because they assume they always know the definition of something. It's like, oh, I know what that is. I got to level up. I got to get up. I got to do what I'm supposed to do. And I agree, but I wanted to look it up. And I love when I look things up and I see something that really motivates me to search out something else. And the, the term leveling up came out of a gaming kind of terminology and it says to progress to the next level of player in character and in abilities often by acquiring experience and i'm saying wow so in order for us to progress to the next level we're going to have to develop our character 
and our abilities. And then it says, often by acquiring experience. And I wanted to talk to you about even now being in this whole quarantine situation, if you will. It's like we have to level up. No, I'm talking about maximizing every moment, every opportunity we have to be better, to develop who we are. So when we get out of this, we won't have any excuses of not knowing the voice of God or the next move of God. A lot of people think that it's going to go back exactly the way that it was, but I can guarantee you things are not going to go back exactly the way it was. You have supervisors that are reconsidering, you know, people's positions because they are, sh they are seeing that, okay, it used to take 10 people to do a job, but now since I'm home, I can really evaluate what I've been doing. Now I realize that it doesn't, it only requires two people. Uh, you're going to have churches that are not going to open back up. You're going to have businesses that are not going to open back up. So the things that you thought, you know, were going to be the same, it's not going to be the same. However, so many people have given us the word about reset. This is a time for us to reset. You all know you're in a well, good taught church that God did not bring Corona to us to reset us or to get us in a better position. But what the enemy meant for evil, God can use it for our good. And so now while we all are on lockdown or in lockdown, um, I believe it's a time for us to reset our attention and really heighten, if you will, our awareness to what God is doing and who God really is. You know, a lot of times we would say things like, oh, I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to study. I don't have time to do this. Well, you ain't got nothing but some time now. And you all know it. It ain't but so much Netflixing. Well, we're not going to say chilling unless you married on here. <laughs> but it ain't but so much Netflix movies you're going to be watching. After a while, I mean, all of us should be tired of looking at another movie. I know people are still working, but studies have already been proven that even people who have an eight-hour job only work about three hours totally. I mean, that's the, the most production time they say that you, you have. And so you have time on your hand now to really get into this word and begin to level up. We have a psychologist at our church and she said, I'm concerned that if people don't reset themselves now, they won't fit in later. And I totally agree with that. If you don't reset yourself, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck looking for, you know, the old ways. You're going to be stuck looking for what God used to do or what God, you know, did for you 10 years ago, or whatever. You're going to have to be so aware of what's happening in this next move or this next season of God so you won't be left behind. The Bible talks about, I think in 2 Chronicles, the the, uh, the sons of Issachar, they understood the times that we were in. And you have a lot of people now that we don't understand the times that we are in. I don't believe that this is the end, but I do believe that these are signs that God said that, you know, were going to come. And a lot of us weren't prepared for that. It's like you weren't prepared in your finances. You weren't prepared emotionally. You weren't prepared mentally. And it has thrown a lot of people off. I mean, way off. You've had so many people that are dealing with the spirit of anxiety like never before. People are having panic attacks, going to the emergency room thinking that they have corona or something, but they weren't prepared. They weren't prepared spiritually. They weren't prepared emotionally. And so you're going to have to get yourself in this word so you can be prepared. You don't want to be like the children of Israel. 
they were so stuck. It was sad. And I want to read this. Um, well, let me tell you what I wrote down for my definition. Then I'm going to read. If you have your Bibles, you could be going to Numbers 14. But I wrote this down for me leveling up. Taking responsibility to prepare myself now in the word for what's next. And you may be saying, well, I don't know what's next. Well, neither do I. But what I do know is that the word of God is always leading. It is always directing. He says, if you seek me first, I'll add all these things unto you. He says, hey, if you acknowledge me first in all of your ways, I'll direct your path. So we have to seek the face of God. I mean, spend quality time with him, not because of what's going on, but because we should have been doing it all the time. You have so many people that are praying now that have never prayed. Um, this is not an attack, but like, where were all of these prayer meetings prior to Corona? You see nurses, you see doctors, you see firefighters. I mean, everybody, the EMTs, they having prayer meetings out in the street, up on top of buildings, singing worship songs. And I think it's a beautiful thing. I have, I really do. I have a niece that's an emergency room doctor. So that's not an attack. But my thing is, where were you before? And it's not just them, but even you, where were you before Corona hit? Where were you spiritually? Were you built up enough to handle what's going on now? And I want to read to you out of Numbers 14, and I'm going to read probably quite a, mm, starting at verse 1 and to go down to um, verse 11. And it reads, so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. This is amazing to me because these people saw God do so many miracles, so many miraculous things before they even made it out of Egypt. And here they have been praying for what, hundreds of years that God would deliver them, that God would set them free. And then God sends all of these plagues, you know, to Pharaoh's house and to all of the, you know, Egyptians to get them out, to be able to speak a word, send a man in there to deliver them, take them across the Red Sea, not on, you know, wetland, but on dry ground. And here they are to this point. They are complaining and talking about maybe you should have just left us in Egypt and let us die. And that's what a lot of believers are doing right now. They're thinking, okay, God, so what are you trying to teach us? Maybe I should have died before Corona hit. Or maybe I shouldn't have bought this house that I bought. Maybe I shouldn't have got this car. I mean, saying all kinds of things like they don't even know who their God is, even though they have seen God move in their lives like never before. That's why you cannot forget to recognize or remember, recall the things that God has done for you in the past, because it'll be easy for you to get in a tough place and forget all about what he has done for you. I'm telling you, that's why the Bible talks about counting your blessings, numbering your blessings, remembering those things. When David, when he got in that fight against Goliath, he had recall. He could say, God, okay, now I'm up against this uncircumcised Philistine. Like, uh, I remember when you delivered me out of the hand of the bear and out of the hand of the lion. So this is nothing. But if you get up against something, you know, that you imagine or picture you know, as being bigger than you, you putting them in the egg you're going to get something got to mute their phone. It's okay. You just have to mute your phone if you just joined us. Oh. Yeah, so like if you get up against something, 
you know, that appears to be bigger than you, you're not going to remember if you don't recall right now. You got to build yourself up when things are good. So when things happen, you'll already be prepared. And that's what I mean about leveling up. That's what I mean about getting yourself together now. Get yourself in this word. Spend quality time in his presence so you won't forget what God has done for you. Even if you go to the store and you find a roll of toilet paper, honey, or find a, a pack of paper towels, you got to be able to say, God, I thank you. Because there are some people who cannot find paper towels and toilet paper right now, for real. But we yeah. forget about the little things, you know, but that's that ain't even little right now, for real. And that's not even a joke. But we forget about the little things that God has done for us. And so when the big thing comes, it's like you have no recall of what he has ever done for you. And to me, that's what happened with the children of Israel. They forgot. They forgot that God brought them out of Egypt when they had prayed to get out. And listen, I'm going to go on. It says, uh, verse 3, why has the Lord brought us out? to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims. Come on, really? Nobody was killing you. Like when Pharaoh's men were coming after you, God closed the water back up and they all drowned. So like if God was trying to kill you, he would have left you in Egypt. Or if God was trying to kill you, he would have never closed the sea back up so they could, you couldn't get to you. But these people have forgot. So they, become, they became stuck. They became stuck. And they never entered into the promised land. But listen, it says, would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Like, really? Would it be better for us to be sinners? than Christians, but you have, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. We got a lot of women who used to have men that would take care of them and they know what to do to get them to take care of them. So now they become Christians. They begin to serve God and they know it's a better way. They know that way was wrong, but now here comes uh, Corona and I'm don't have any money coming in. I got a little stimulus check that they just sent out, but this ain't enough to cover my bills. So what I'm going to do, would it be better for me to just go ahead and call, you know, dude, because he could take care of me. Well, no, you still have to stay focused on what God told you. He told them that he was going to take them to a promised land. And I'm going to show you. It says, so they said to one another, this is how things happen and spread. This is what they do in church. So they say in church, are you going to Bible study? No, I'm not going to Bible study. Are you getting on the uh, Zoom call with Pastor Karen? Because I don't feel like it. I done had enough church. Well, you ain't had enough church. You, you ain't even been in church. You talking about one hour a day, two I mean, a week, two hours a week, somebody call a side meeting for you to be a part of something, to be blessed. Hey, look, I just want to motivate you guys here on tonight. I want to stretch you. I want to get you so fired up that when you get off of this call, that you will see that God has something, I mean, greater than what you thought about. I know a lot of you had plans and you saw this year, this is 2020. This is the year my vision is going to be manifested. People have been prophesying to you, speaking all kind of words to you. And then here come Corona. It's like, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> it don't look like it's going to happen. Yes, it is. Don't throw in the towel now. Now, this is, listen. When I tell you, this is the believer's time. If you get yourself prepared like you're supposed to, I mean, financially, uh, mentally, spiritually, so your ears will be sensitive to the voice of God, I guarantee you, you're going to see some things that you've never seen. I mean, it's like, can you, do you think that maybe... Your vision was too small and God wanted you to see something greater. Or did you think you maxed out and you got, you're going to get exactly what you wanted? No, God says, wait a minute, hold up. It's time to reset. 
put your focus on me. Look at me, seek me in all of your ways. And that little vision that you, you got, I got that. That's a little vision compared to what God has for you. Come on, we all know the scripture. He'll give us abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. I mean, God is greater than what you can even imagine. So don't get discouraged because you thought your vision now isn't going to come to pass because of this big, you know, thing that caught us off guard. It caught you off guard, but guess what? It never caught God off guard. He knew exactly what was going to be happening. He knew exactly what was going to be taking place. Okay, hold on. I'm in verse five. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Ahan Jephunu, that could be totally wrong. I have no idea. Who were among those had spied out the land, tore their clothes. Look, they had already spied out the land. But it's amazing that the majority wins sometimes, even though they are wrong. That's why you're going to have to be so sensitive to the voice of God. I don't care if everybody around you, you know, are telling you to do something and you, it seems like the right thing to do. It's like, you're going to have to know, God, is this for me to do? The majority doesn't always rule. Please always remember that because you had two out of a whole nation of, of people that was really like against them. Of course, it was only 12 spies that went in and the other 10, you know what they did. They was like, nah, I see ourselves as grasshoppers in it. They were talking about their grasshoppers. Nobody ever even, they didn't even talk to the people. How they going to see themselves as grasshoppers? Their, their mentality. You got to have your mentality right. It says, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. They was trying to convince them. And this if is not if really. It should be since because God had already promised them. He says, so I'm going to change the word if to since because if you read anywhere, you will see that God had already told, you know, Moses, he had already told Abraham, he had already told Joshua, he had already told all of them that I'm going to give you a promised land. I'm going to take you, you know, somewhere and this land is going to flow with milk and honey. It's, he told everybody. He always, he never took his promise back from the very beginning. So listen, since the Lord delights in us, the Lord delights in you. This isn't just to the children of Israel. You are the child of Israel now. You're the type pattern. It's just a type or pattern of who you are today. So God is still saying to you today, since I delight in you, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. So here's Joshua and Caleb trying to convince the people, like if God told you he was going to do something, God is not like man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he has to repent. If he said it, he's going to make it good. I mean, God is not like our old boyfriends or maybe some of y'all husbands, I don't know. But God is not going to lie. God is, he's faithful. The one thing that he cannot do is lie. He said he cannot lie. And so here they had a word from the Lord, but somewhere again, because trials and tribulations come to throw you all. Just like, I think when I came there, I ministered on, you know, focusing on the promise. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but when that time, when I got that word, when my husband was in the hospital on this respirator, I mean, intubated, couldn't breathe on his own on an ECMO machine that was oxygenating his blood. And the doctors didn't give him any hope. I mean, it'll give me any hope, if you will. It was like, what was I going to do? Was I going to look at that situation and say, okay, well, I can't trust God in this because this looks bigger than me. 
it was a major situation. When I tell you major, it was a huge situation. They didn't give me any hope. And doctors are taught not to give you hope because if something happened, they don't want to take responsibility for giving you hope. And then something happened and then you want to assume like, you told me. So no, they're going to hype it up even more. Like, yeah, this, this is it. No, I had automatic recall. I remember what God had done for me in the past. I have been healed of thy hypothyroids, never had surgery, don't take any medicine. I mean, I was healed of rheumatoid arthritis. My hands and my feet was, was swell up. And that's been about 15 years ago now. Have no problems, you know, with that. You know, your hands start, you know, changing or whatever. I have it. People have it in my family. I mean, I had a hysterectomy. The doctor burnt my intestines and made this fissure and it stuff started leaking out. And then they wanted to do emergency surgery and give me a colostomy bag. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. But I didn't do that then is because I remember how God had healed me before. That's why during this whole time, you can't trip. You got to sit back now and, and say, okay, let me count my blessings. Let me think about what God has done for me in the past. He has brought me out of darkness and placed me into his marvelous light. He has provided for me. He has healed me. He has saved my household. It's like you have to know what God has done for you so you can have that blessed assurance, if you will. So when you come up against something like Corona, you will be able to look at it in the eye and say, okay, this too shall pass. This is just a temporary thing. I'm not going to make any permanent decisions in a temporary situation. This too shall pass. God, you got us. And this is just about to be over. I mean, that's how we're going to have to stand and trust God. And so listen, I want to finish reading. He said, only do not rebel against the Lord for fear that the people of the land Wait a minute. Okay, wait, let me go back. Then he's then he will bring us into the land and give it to us. That's tell, how he's telling them. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land. It's like, why would you fear somebody? I don't care how big it looks. I don't care how close this thing is coming to you. This is Joshua and Caleb telling them. He was like, don't fear this stuff. It says, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Oh my God. They wanted to kill Caleb and Joshua because they're telling them what the Lord was going to do for them. It's like, oh, look, you're talking heresies. You, you're crazy. You know, you're out of your mind. We've seen these giants. We can't go into that land. We're not great enough. We're not smart enough. We're not, I don't know. We don't have enough faith. We don't do, no, we have everything that we will ever need. God has equipped you. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, he bought all of who he is inside of you. And so all you have to do is go within you, Pull what's in you out and begin to operate in it. The Bible says, whatsoever we bind here on earth shall be bound in the heavens. Listen, if you don't like what's going on in your life right now, bind it. If you like more of what you have going on in your life, loose it. He says you can bind and you can loose. The process starts right here in the earth, but you got to open up your mouth. You are a speaking spirit, just like God is a speaking spirit. He created his word, his world with his words, and we're going to have to create our world with our words. No, I'm telling you, you're going to have to begin to open up your mouths and be bold, begin to decree some things, begin to declare some things in your life. I don't care how crazy it sounds. I don't care how crazy it looks, but you're going to have to be motivated and big enough to know that God got you. But listen to this in verse 11. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? Listen to this. With all the signs which I have performed among them, like God is, he's tripping. Well, he ain't tripping, but he like, come on, all of what I've shown, like how many times do I have to show them something? How many times do I have to prove myself 
to them for them to believe what I what I told them. It's like if I told them I was gonna give them the promised land, like why can't they believe me? Like I I did some things to Pharaoh and his men. I, I brought them across and they still don't believe me. It's like, how many times now I'm gone from Pharaoh to you? Like how many times does God have to show himself strong in your life before you really trust him, before you really believe him? It's like, God, you don't have to show me another thing. I don't have, and listen to me, you don't have to be sick to know that God is a healer. You know why? because he said it in his word that he's a healer you don't have to be broke to know that God is a provider why can't we live a lifestyle of faith where we walk from one faith victory to the next faith faith victory like we shouldn't even have to be praying for as much stuff as we pray for now we really shouldn't we sit around praying father I thank you that you're going to do this father I thank you you're going to do no, I live a lifestyle of faith. So much so when that Matthew 6, 33 says, seek him first and all these things shall be added unto me. That's what I expect. So every day I'm getting up, God, I worship you. I praise you. I give you glory and honor. I'm confessing scriptures. I'm, I'm studying my word. I'm praying that my ears will be sensitive to the voice of God. So when God tell me to turn right, there's some things that I've been praying you know, about something else, but this is something that I need and it just shows up. What? That's a life of faith, really. The Bible says, y'all, I mean, you already know, the just shall live by what? Come on, let me see y'all lips move. Live by what? What should y'all live by? Uh, uh -huh. The yeah. just shall live by faith. We live yeah. by faith. That means that Everything we do is by faith. We don't just pick up faith when we help go through a crisis. And I want to read you this last scripture. And then I want to open it up for some discussion. It says in verse, I mean, in chapter 13, verse one, the Lord said to Moses, because I just came out of 14, right? So I wanted to take you back to 13 because I wanted you to see why they should have been convinced that God was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. It says, then the Lord, I mean, the Lord said to Moses, send men to explore Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of their ancestors' tribes. But he said, which I am giving to the Israelites. Well, we try to figure out how. I don't give a care how, I don't care how Corona ends. Just let it end. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't care how my bills are going to get paid. Just pay my bills. I don't care. I when Pastor Mike was in that hospital, I didn't care like how he came out. Just get him out. And I told the doctors that, I mean, I remember telling them that how I didn't care if they did, you know, made a lot of little plays or give me a Hail Mary, you know, one big play. I, I don't care. And most Christians are so focused on what's going on around them that they can't even see what's going on in front of them. And you got to be so focused on what you are going to and not what you are going through. I challenge you today to level up, level up in your thinking, level up in your giving. Don't stop sowing your seed now. Ne listen, and they didn't ask me to tell you this. I don't care what church you go to, but I'm telling you now is not the time to stop paying your tithes. Now is not the time to stop giving your offering. It is not time. Listen, stuff happens in the famine land for Christians. Like this is a time of famine for a lot of believers. And we got to know that we can sow our seed in the time of famine and it's going to produce a great harvest. This is the time to level up. Let's level up. Be prepared spiritually for this next move. What is, what is it going to be, Didi? I have no clue. But I can promise you this, that I'm reading my word, that I'm talking to the Lord daily, and I am preparing myself physically and mentally because I want to be ready for whatever God is about to show off 
and doing in this land. And I'm, 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 I'm eager to see. The Bible says that this earth has been groaning and waiting for the sons of man, you know, the sons of men to be revealed. And it's time to show off. It is for the body of Christ. I'm mean, not show off in the negative, but it's time for God to, to show itself strong in the earth. So let's level up. All right. I want to pray for you before we do the questions though. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person that are viewing here on tonight, those that are part of our Zoom party, Father, our Zoom time of experience in your word. I pray now, Father, that every need will be met. I pray that the peace of God, the passive all understanding will keep them, Father. I pray that they will be able to rest in your presence because they trust you. I cast down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And I bring every thought into captivity in the obedience of your word. I add my faith to their faith, Father. You said what well, two or three touch and agree that we can ask anything and it shall be done. So I add my faith to their faith. I thank you for the desires of their heart being manifested like never before. You said when they delight themselves in you, you will give them those desires. Satan, we serve you notice. You have no place. You have nothing to do with them because they are a seed of Abraham. They are children of the most high God. They are my sisters and I command you to flee now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that no corona no effects, no effects, nothing shall come nigh their dwelling, effects or effects, I, I don't care, whatever, I bind it now in the name of Jesus, and Father, I'll forever give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor for all that you're doing in our lives, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, praise God. What a powerful word, what a powerful word. One that came from Dr. Didi. Just like yours above. And just and as you are just meditating on that word that just came from such an awesome woman of God, just going to ask you just to reflect on just some things in your life because what we've just been talking about is leveling up. And, and if you are ready to level up, does not matter where you are at this time in your life, but if you are ready to level up just wherever you are, just for about 30 seconds, for about 30 seconds, just, 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 just be still, just, and, 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 and let's just, you know, just, just take some time for you and focus on you and him and you and him and and tell him what you want. Tell him. Lay everything at his feet and, and just give it to him. Because you all know that my favorite scripture is 1 Peter 5 and 7 where he says, Cast all your cares, all your worries, and all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So just give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him today. Give it to him. Give it to him right now. Just give it to him. Because yes, it's time for us to level up. It's time for us to start leveling up, leveling up. And in order for us to do that, sometimes we have to let go of some things. And, and some of those things that it might be hard for us to let go and walk away from. Because some of those things are close to us and some of those things are habits and that we don't want to let go and some of those things are family members and but sometimes God separate us to prepare us for where he wants us to go and what he wants us to do so right now so right now right now right now right now you are in the presence of the most high the most high God, the most high God. Nothing, 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 nothing is too big. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too hard. Just ask him for it. Ask him. It's, 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 
It's in for the asking. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. him. All he wants you to do is ask him. Ask him. So just let us, just, just, just let me pray for you. For Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for that word that went forth on today. We thank you for the woman of God, O Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless those that had tuned in, O Heavenly Father. You know their petitions, O Heavenly Father. You know all about them, O Heavenly Father. You know what they stand in the need of, O Heavenly Father. O Heavenly Father, because you are no respect of person, O Heavenly Father, what you've done for one, you will surely do for another, O Heavenly Father. And we thank you right now. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do, O Heavenly Father. We thank you for what you've already done, O Heavenly Father. O Heavenly Father, even though we're in the middle of this pandemic, O Heavenly Father, we still going to give you the praise. We still are going to give you all the praise, O Heavenly Father, because we know, O Heavenly Father, you are the all-knowing God. And we thank you and we glorify you and we bless your name, O Heavenly Father. And we thank you on today, O Heavenly Father. And we thank you for showing us, O Heavenly Father. We thank you. We thank you for giving us the, the tools to help us to be able to level up, O Heavenly Father. We thank you. 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 We glorify you. We magnify you on today. Oh God, we love you. We thank you for the word that went forth. And all over the airways, if you are listening, we just want to say amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you all. We thank you. We thank those that that tuned in for, for that word. And again and again, we just thank Dr. Dee Dee Freeman for that awesome word on today. We thank you all for tuning in. And we want you to please do not forget that come on, come on out and join us on next Sunday, next Sunday at 1030 as well for Save Women Rock for another powerful word that's going to come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you for joining us. Amen. And as always, life is better when we do it together. Amen. Wow, what a powerful, powerful word. Hope you enjoyed receiving it as much as I enjoyed sharing it. Listen, I want you to make the decision right now. I want you to consider receiving Jesus as Lord of your life. I want you to consider coming into a winning lifestyle. It's real easy. It's real simple. Let's just pray together. Won't you lift your hands and pray this prayer with me? Father God, will you please forgive us for our sins? Will you please forgive us for our trespasses and allow your Holy Spirit to come into us, to sanctify us, and to allow us to become sons and daughters. Uh, we believe and receive all through faith in the master's name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hey, just that easy, just that simple, praying that prayer, you're on the road to a winning lifestyle. Now I encourage you to get connected with a Bible teaching church and continue this journey. We invite you to consider 3C as the church to connect with. You can connect with us in a couple of ways. You can connect with us out on our website www.your3c.com you can connect with us through social media or you can simply text the word welcome to 804-925-1466 our motto here at 3c is life is better when we do it together listen i want to ask you to consider helping us accomplish the vision that god has given to us by simply uh, sowing a financial gift into our ministry Hey, listen, we, we, we promise that we're a ministry of integrity. We're putting the work, the, the monies together to do the work in our community. 
Here's a couple of ways that you can give. Again, you can go right out to our website, www.your3c.com. Click on giving. You can give your gift that way. Or you can actually text your gift in. You can text 804-409-8687. Make your financial gift there. You'll get receipts immediately. Uh, again, we're ministry above board, doing things in a good godly manner. So we invite you to connect. We invite you to give. We invite you to come visit us live. If you think it's good via uh, live stream, you should come check out the whole service. So we hope to meet you real soon. You can visit us on our Hemranko campus at 2213 National Street in Ranko, Virginia, 23231. Remember, life is better when we do it together. Peace.